Hello? Okay, yeah, you can hear me. Hello everyone and welcome to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. This is a game I've been really waiting for. I didn't even know it was being made for PlayStation until like, I think like a month ago whenever I found out that they're making this for for consoles and I'm like, eww, because I think I was around, what time, what age, what age was I whenever this game came out in 2015, so it would have been 12? At the time this game came out and I just absolutely loved it. I watched Markiplier play it and honestly I've been waiting for this to come to console so uh, let's get right into it. Oh god, <laughs> the end is never. <laughs> this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Oh sorry guys, just uh, let me see if, the can, if I can Fix this, and 63, there we go. All right. Employee number 427, the job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh, wow. A little bit of a slide there. Hold on, I'm just going to go to settings and change some stuff. First, I want to see if I can turn off the uh, visibility of the show subtitles it's on. Normal. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, and... I love the way it sounds like a computer, that's just another thing I love. Yeah, it's just a simple game, but God damn it, I love it. Also, can I just say something? How much does Stanley get paid? Like, you do gotta realize you have to be paid good money for this. Like, how much is Stanley being paid? Hello? All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Oh Perhaps God, I'm lost. simply missed a memo. A memo. Hold on. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I wonder what happens if I turn off everything. Oh. There we go. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I know there are multiple endings, so I'm going to follow the director and do the other endings afterwards. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a... Let it ball up inside you. Take it out. And I couldn't read that fast enough. What you doing? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hey boss, I have a question. I wonder what happens if I can... Oh! 
the store opened. Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes if the boss suffered loose. Okay, that's locked. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, Two eight, eight, four, four five. five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Hello? What is my boss been keeping from me all this time? Oh, a big red button. I love pushing buttons. Down we go! Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, what does one that of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Mm -hmm. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. No, it, it's dark. Don't tell me it's going to crash. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet... Even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. 
Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was oh, don't exactly leave yet. the way, There's no more. right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Because there's one thing you have to know. The end is never. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, time to break the game. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, yes, I probably missed a memo. But I'm going to go came to a set of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Yes, the employee. Uh, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone... What? Really? <laughs> I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Nope. Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Yeah. Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. But what about the blue? I want to go blue, I love blue. Aha, <laughs> perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I'm colorblind. <laughs> No offense. I still don't, don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, there it is. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. <laughs> Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did Done. you want to see? Vehicles? Skill yep. trees? Yep. Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. Okay. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we're going. I'd find just walk. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, it's instinct mostly, a calling in your gut. 
I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Any powerful worldwide leaderboard? Good old Neil, number one with two seconds. How did he do that? Oh. Was that Team Fortress 2? I haven't even played for that long. What would happen if I just... Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep I don't really think it's four hours. I don't like the noise. Yeah, I'm just gonna let that. Bye, baby. You heartless bastard. <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's, it's the noise, I don't know what to do. I'm completely it's out of ideas. Noise. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's okay. see. What do we have here? <laughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. What? <laughs> what? Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? A lot. Uh, well, it seems what obvious I've... to me that you yeah, were meant I've to been... play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your grid tower. What Perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. What, what does hmm. that... Yes, that must be it. What, does that what a say? fascinating um, venture into the experience of total mental, mental depravity. depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley, and it seems there's even more. Come, come, let's the venture the outward and see what else is out there. Hello, uh, that's a... Cookbook. This is completely new. Uh, way different from what I saw. Oh, I went the wrong direction. Going the stars. Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. What? It is. It's an it's open, open world, world game. game. Good God, God quickly, God, block it off. No! No! Oh. Thank goodness, Stanley, what a close call. You really wandered off into that, that thing. Wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, 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 yeah. thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. You can't something jump. Something nice, big, insurmountable walls. Okay, I think this will be just the thing. What? Is that another reference? 
Rocket Link! Oh my god, please tell me the cars come out and... For you to run around in. There is tell me the cars come out that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stan, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stand in. I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. This is so fun and weird. Hi, welcome to Rocket League 2, the is first person fun? edition. Is it better than my miserable little story that I worked so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought, and I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls oh, no. make for an even more euphoric Don't sports you dar. experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes another ball. What? Yes. Oh, goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls! What? 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 <laughs> what? Oh my god. Can I do it? A second. Are you enjoying your step? Oh! oh. What, are you doing? what are you doing? I didn't mean to do that! Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley. What? I did not mean to do that. Which way am I meant to go? I think I went the wrong way. Oh, this is a developer build. Back when it used Gmod assets. God, this feels like the back rooms all of a sudden. The left door and right door. So, yeah, this is this is literally what I think happens if like a build gets like abandoned. Just it ends up being like this. <laughs> God, I really hope nothing pops out at me, because honestly that would be terrifying. Employee number 47, here we go. And this is the old room. Do I have to restart, or what do I do? Can someone help me? I, I don't know what I'm meant to do here. Just leave a comment, please. This is so weird. I need someone to talk to. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. Okay, thank god. I thought I had to quit her for a second. Mm -hmm. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo.
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, open doors, he entered the door on his left. Right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. Yes, really. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I don't know what to do now. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. You can't see it right now, but I'm smiling. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, from here. Uh, hold on guys, I'll be right back in two seconds. Left. All right, oh, sorry man. guys. No, it's no, to wait, the right, my right mistake. mistake. Right, always right, as they always say. No, 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 not the right. Why would Why I have I ever said, said it was to the right? right? What was I thinking? It's clearly. Oh dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see, we went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely this way. But what about this way? Okay. Hi, guys, I'm Mr. Beast. No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 okay. We just, we just have to get back to, um, oh. Okay, no, I'm changing. It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about, rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense... Okay, thank God. We'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this what? time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay. From the top. Hi guys, I'm Mr. Beast, and today we're spending 24 hours in an abandoned building! <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. Oh, uh, I really wish Mr. Beast could watch my videos, but that's All of his co-workers were gone. Oh, oh. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Perhaps, or perhaps of something else. Let's do it. Be my Valentine. Oh, oh Peter, save power, save lives. Have you seen the energy costs? No, they are too expensive. People don't know when to save electric. They're way too expensive now. Wait, 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 what? No, 
No, I no, restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or... Uh... Hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's oh. find the story. Door. One. I have to go left. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, shit. That way, that way. I'll Good say it. Way. This is the worst adventure I've ever no. been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. There is. Look. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? No, I can find a way out. I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I'll be right back guys to find you. I'll be right back.
try by that guy, um, I did have that dinner, you know, shamans, it's weird how shamans work. <laughs> how do shamans work? Okay, over me. Oh, yeah, here. Okay, yep, yeah, it's, it's worse. worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Okay. Do you know what would be, like, both cool and terrifying? If you walk past one of these rooms and you just saw Stan, literally Stanley, just walk past and you're like, Oh my god, there are multiple. Power bills. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Now this... Well, I'll be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, it, is that correct? Hmm. Do you, Do you remember, Stanley? Stanley? Well, do you know, well, you know what? what? Since, Since I've completely I've forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, doing how, about how about this? this? You, you win! win. Yeah. Congratulations! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so good job. Thank you. Oh, no. No, what? I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. No. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. Just spawns us on a cliff end. All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Trademarked. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Just follow the line that's trademarked. You see? The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Cut the music, go back and look at that fern. Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. Okay. Wait, but we're back at the office? No, 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 no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Oh, no, 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 not again, Line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through... One zero four No, I can't take this anymore to hell with it. Restart. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? 
Okay. Now, now. Yes, yes, this, this is, exciting. is exciting. Just, Just me and Stanley forging, forging a new path, path a new a story. story. Well, it could be anything. What do you what want do you our want story to be? To be? Go Explosions. Use, your, Use your, imagination. your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, Stanley I'm, I'm ready, ready for, for it. it. Avengers. Oh, oh no, not, not you again. again. Stanley, Stanley, I'd also I'd like to veto, like veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it. We <laughs> <be fine. laughs> oh, sometimes it's funny. Everything's just trademarked. <laughs> ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Oh, the other way. Okay. So I know that each door has to lead somewhere. Which means, Which means that somewhere, somewhere the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? Probably. Since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another, Another victory for logic. logic. Come, Come Stanley. Stanley. Our, Our destiny, destiny awaits. awaits. Alright. Oh, hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me okay, that's hold what on. this is. Uh, can I it's all oh, one no. giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game eight eight, eight times? times? That's really, really how, how all this goes? goes? It's all, it's all determined? determined? So now, so now according, according to the to schedule, schedule, I restart, I restart again. again. Then what? Then what? Am, I am I just supposed, just supposed to, forget? to forget? Well, what if, well, what I, don't if I don't want to forget? forget. My, mind My mind goes, goes blank, blank simply because it's written here, here on this, on this, this thing, thing, wall. wall. Well, well, who consulted, who consulted me? me? Why don't Why I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I don't want it to there be. There is no longer an office simply starting. Up. I don't want to forget what's, what's going, on. going on. I don't want to be don't trapped like this. I won't restart oh, the game. I won't I do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> and the time return stopped? Does that mean. Um, did we do it? Did we oh. break the cycle? The, um, Looks like whatever it is way that made this schedule. Uh, How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something, something happen? happen? No. Because we're the only one there. So, you have been playing. Okay. okay. <sighs> I guess now I guess we just now wait. We wait. You, know, you know, I suppose so in some way, way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So, I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime, <laughs> if you... That scared me. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the trophy? Click a door five times? Is that all you think a trophy is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks? Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps, Perhaps 50, 50 clicks, clicks will do it. Will do it. Yes, yeah. almost yeah. certainly All right. 50 clicks. No, 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 I'm still not feeling it. I want this trophy to have meant something. It has to be a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way no matter the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? I want it. Oh, 
Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. I gotta say, the one he owns, 420, has gotta be blazing right now. Excellent! I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415, let's give it 10 clicks or so. Now, back to door number 437. Right. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. Copy machine down here. It's in the other room. All right. That room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay. Now go climb on employee 419's desk. Okay. What? 419's over here, isn't it? Yep. Four one nine. There we go. Turn. Oh no. Hmm. Huh. Yes, this is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door four one six. We've almost got it. Now the copy machine. Do that one again. You're starting to sound like Mr. Bean. Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Yes! We did it! Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Yeah, that. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. <laughs> wow, looks like someone here. Just... No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Mm. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Yes. Why? Please offer me because some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Because of one thing. Knowledge. Nah, I'm just joking. I want the broom closet. I love the you do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Is that all? Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. 
You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed in front of your screen. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiologies. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making them understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Ah, second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was my that, of course, hurting. this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. 
Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Yeah, we would like to, we would like to commit Marilyn for murder. <laughs> Why? Because you ran away from the body. <laughs> All right, um... What other ones are there? There is the, the meeting room. room. Yes, that's where, that's where everyone would be. Stanley, Stanley just, just needed to get to the meeting room, room and from and then, then on, he would he never would be alone, alone ever again. That's me. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, yep. and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you... Or... Up, up, down, down, left, right. All this time? This okay, I'll pause that. Economical someone work. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. 
You need to be the one. Oh, no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly? I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. I can't believe I was so mistaken. Hi guys, I'm Mr. Beast! Make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video where choice it's the best part of being a real person <laughs> but if used incorrectly it can also be the most dangerous for example in this scenario a hypothetical real person named rupert has a choice he could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read which choice would you make remember that unlike and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> Uh, it's 4.30, I like them. Okay. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Okay. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Okay. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. And we go up the stairs and see where the story leads. <laughs> Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. 
No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe the red door. You talked about that you, my story. You've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Huh? Portal? A different way of it. Wait a second. I'm still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with you. Hold on a sec. You, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you'd run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> well, when if I go for the spike door again. Doors, he entered the door on his left. Right. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Okay. Behave exactly as Stanley would. All right. That so that makes responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, that door's locked. Nice. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Can this still work? Hear me? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Night part 444. Oh, I don't think you can hear me. Night shark 115. <coughs> Stanley spoke the code. Night shot. Hold on. Audio. Why are uh, languages just. I'm gonna make that small. Uh, show transfer. Lean. Uh, 
show content of the Arc one one five. He Night spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark one one five. Night Shark. I'm sorry. Is there a problem? Yes, I can't you talk. You didn't mishear me, did you? No. Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Night Shark one one five. Okay, fine, you're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you can't. Howard, you, you! When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley's fierce. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. The end. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything alright? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without One you. One thing I want to know, and I don't think that it's like, whenever the... Here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. Based on the words of the song. You hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Okay, before we go, um, not, not like go and as and turn off, before we continue on, I just thought of something whenever that, whenever that crashed, like the whole game crashed and like the lights turned off and everything. What was it, this is a test by GLaDOS, or GLaDOS? Like it could be all just one huge test. Think about it. Shell's the only person in Portal. Portal 2, she's in this room that's meant to represent reality. One of Stanley's literally trapped in a room which is never ending. And the narrator is just an AI talking. Oh my god. Wait, is that actually the time? Because it told me I needed it. Because it asked for the time earlier today, so I thought I needed it. Nope, not the actual time. I want to know when. Okay, let's go. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? I don't know, but I'm excited. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. 
The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe <laughs> features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Me too. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, is it broken? What's this is all the new content. Should we, should we be moving somewhere? Or, or, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them. Oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right. All right. The <laughs> content jump circle. The jump circle. Oh my God. Is, is that it? I hope not. Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness, another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. No. I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. What's I knew one? there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. Thank you for enjoying <laughs> That's it? <laughs> oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's trophies, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test trophy, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game, and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? No. What the? Okay, this is new. Psst. Stanley, come over here. In the vent. I want to show you something. All right, fine. I'll come to the vent, but I'm coming back here to go that way. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be, but it got me thinking about the past, and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special, and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. 
take a look. I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. Memory zone. Oh my god, the letter of You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap PlayStation port? Remember back in October? A cheap PlayStation port? When the game originally launched. Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. It took. Oh my god. It took a lot of us and kids to Stanley Parable over it. Oh, comedy! I wonder if it's like that for Xbox, but it's actually like an Xbox award or something. Our first kiss, my first car, the release of this <laughs> Parable 2014. <laughs> okay, yeah, Stanley Parable. Wait. Stanley Parable. Is that at the actual time? Is that the actual digital? It's very hard for me to see. Uh, it's 20. I don't think so. Uh, 2013, when the Stanley Parable was released. <laughs> oh, here's the Steam page. Don't forget the Stanley Parable. Oh, I love this. This is so much fun. What's over here? Cargo. Crisp shape. Indoor monthly time itself. Good times. <laughs> oh my god, what's this? Stand the parable on what? Oh, excuse me. A tip down memory lane. A trip, not a tip. The one dollar bill that Mr. Krabs has. The old demo, I have that on the laptop. Very fun. Unachievable. It's impossible to get this achievement. Go outside, don't play for five years. <laughs> oh my god, is that actually a trophy? Please tell me that is. Um British Academy of Film and Television Art Developer Team Stanley Parable Game Designers. Um no. Debut game. Story. <laughs> Nothing. What's over here? New video game releases today. Uh, college shows on ever effects of E L and Ron Four. Cost. There's new task. Business leader pushes electric of Um. Stanley Parable deal. Tough choices. Oh. The music is lovely. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. Okay, that's the beginning. One of these pictures. Minecraft! Yes! Oh, some memories. Oh. The tearful nostalgic. It 
was good. <laughs> Portal, yes, these were part of the original. Oh, memories, so much memories. Yep. Person of the year. Oh my god, it's actually them. Ah, it's actually these figures. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's different. Oh my god, that's a Mustang. Bike? The bike clickable. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. Oh no. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. All they had to do was transport it in pristine condition along to the PlayStation, boom, done. And they couldn't even do that. Couldn't resist the urge to go meddling with a beloved franchise. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh no, oh god no Stanley. It's a collection of reviews from Pressurized Gas, the extremely popular online storefront for computer games. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down here. Oh my god, what's Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? God, honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game. Say, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, <laughs> with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I can oh, write up a handful a good one. of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Oh, that is so fun. We turn that on? I love the way the way this game is self-aware of everything. It's so self-aware of itself. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy, Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh, dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure, like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. No, it is. It's funny. It's up where? What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. Okay, yeah, that, that's... I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, 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 yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then... Then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. That's the only skip button there is.
And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zip. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute, the minute I start, I start to go, to go off, off on a thoughtless off. display of self-absorption, it's... it's Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. Oh. Unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think, I think the skip, the skip button, button has been, has been aptly demonstrated, demonstrated, and we can, and we say, can goodbye say goodbye to it and just... Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, Stanley, Stanley please, please don't, don't push, push the button, button again. again! It's been 12, 12 hours! hours. <laughs> You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly... Oh, Stanley! You're back! You're back! Oh, my goodness! I have someone to talk to again! Oh, my God! Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking, and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't standing. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even... Oh... Hello, Hello, it's you. It's you. You're here You're again. again. Welcome. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt... Hello? Narrator? Anyone? Funny. It was, funny. Meant, it was to meant to have a point. point. It, was it was meant to speak, to, speak to the human, human condition. condition. But where, where are the where jokes? Where are the where jokes? They bemoaned, they screamed, they, they gnashed, gnashed their teeth and said, Enter. Never the end is 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 How long has it been? Like like he says it's gonna wait a year. Has it been like twenty years in the future or something? I don't know. Whoa. Light. Quickly, keep on doing that. You can escape, Stanley, I believe. <laughs> oh, wow. That's got beautiful. Oh, nope, it, it's gone. It, it's been destroyed. World War Free happened. Okay. There are no plants.
Oh god. Freedom. What the I want to go back. I want to go back. Please, please. You see that? I'm looking backwards. I need to go back. Well, looks like I have to roam the desert. Alone. No one to guard over me. No one to talk to. I should not have frozen many times. That's the people I dealt with. Oh, there's Oh, and we're back. Okay. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? Yeah. Okay, I love the way he's becoming... Like, oh my god, is this really... He's like, I'm slowly breaking. I'm dying more and more and more. The new, new content. <laughs> oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Okay, I can't wait to see this. Is this going to be like a... Oh, God. It just cuts right to it. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing his ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> oh my god, it's Stanley Parable Tony. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly port yes. with a few minor additions? I was actually Think hoping of all for that. the territory will cover with a fully fledged seat. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why yes. are so many possibilities? They could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Yep. I'm honestly. Okay, to be honest. I've been waiting for this, like, I really want to see a Stanley Parable 2 now. I looked it up back in 2014, 2015, and there was still nothing on it. But it's just confirmation that we're finally getting a Stanley Parable 2. Mm, Stanley Parable 2 confirmed. This way. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Back two doors. More TSP, better TS. When when? <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing you're like they're, they're wait a second, they're poking fun at um. Firstly, they have the semi parable too. I think that's a reference to the. Second one is a reference to, I want to say, Metal Gear 2. Let me look it up, um, Metal Gear. I know that that one's definitely a, a Resident Evil sequel for, for thing. Hold on, let me look it up here. Um, Metal Gear Solid 2. Box art. Box art, there we go. 
Yeah, the reference to Metal Gear Solid 2. It's in the same font and everything. Resident Evil, obviously. Yep. God, this is... Oh my god, this is bringing back so many memories. Hold on. Uh, now, to be clear, clear, I haven't, I haven't quite, quite nailed, nailed down, down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Oh my god, this is class. Oh my god, it's a red carpet. <laughs> New features? Where are the new features? Come on, tell me. This is so cool. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm just geeking out right now. Oh my god. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Alright. Stanley Parable, I want one of these. I want one of these shirts. <laughs> The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Why do I want to try that out? Then I, I'm afraid if I go in there, I won't be able to come back out. So actually, you know what's good? I'm doing this. I want to see this button that never. For the no! Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim. Sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim, seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim, and as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Do you feel it deeply? Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. <laughs> Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. <clears throat> now, allow yourself to become Jim. Imagine yourself driving to work as Jim, playing frisbee on the weekends as Jim, staying up all night for a popcorn and horror movie sleepover as Jim, developing a crippling substance addiction as Jim, rediscovering yourself through fringe religious groups as Jim, and finally, dying a slow death at an old age, surrounded by members of your cult, as Jim. Do you feel it in your soul? Are you really, truly Jim right now? If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim! <laughs> yes! You see! What a thrill! What a rush! That was you! The button described you! Do it again! Do it again! Jim! <laughs> It hits even harder the second time. If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too emotionally drained from all of this personal validation. Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much gym. I'm putting the gym button away. Otherwise, soon you'll start to lose all sense of who you actually are. Jim. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable 2. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. The whole new office. Red is the new orange. The new updates ray tracing more of the same but good way sequel to the new feature, new content, new ideas. 
jump circle infinity hole? This is a bucket, dear god. There's more. No! Is that meant to be the new version of him? Easy trophy, get here. Ooh. Pull the lever. No, I'm st Get your right. I'll be down there soon. Soon. I want to see everything. No! You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's... Oh, wait. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. No, I don't know. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece then. No! I want to jump! Let me jump! You can't deny me my rights of jumping! Oh. See that? Lower level. Okay. Jump circle, death map, free trophy, which is Q. Where's Q? Q's are. Office. Or no. Infinity Holes K, which uh, is our number five is this map. Okay. Look at this. What's up here? Oh, this is... Ah! Collectibles! Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. It's beautiful. Okay. Oh my god, were these people frozen, or...? God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. The infinity hole? It won't end hole. Now, here's something special. You remember that broken test trophy that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the trophy. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever, and when you pull it, the trophy will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the trophy is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley. But I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Oh, I'm sad. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? What's this? No screenshots, I can. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on Get Well Sunday and Happy 12th Birthday. Which would you go with? Get Well Sunday, Happy 12th Birthday, step nice. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Oh. Happy 12th birthday, step niece, it is. Oh. Or actually, 
Maybe I should have gone with... No. 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 I've made yeah, my decision. We're moving on. Oh. Is there a collectible back here? Come on. Jim. Jim. That's new. What's this one? Oh yeah, this is a picture room. Yep. The infinity hole. I never had. I want to do that last. I feel like that's the end of it. Like that's where it ends. This whole thing. So I'm gonna see if I can get this trophy next door. Sort of like a certain pattern you have to do to get this. Or is it still broken and locked? Yep. Can't get it. <sighs> Hold on a second, guys. I want to check something. <laughs> not been yet. I haven't been up here. Have I? No, that's the exit. That is the exit. Okay, so I've been... Jump circle, can't do that. Five is this map, quarter. The button that says gym, merch, Z, which is there. Hashtag setting world champion. Settings world champion. Where is hashtag? Hashtag is... Right there. Okay, so it's five. So it's it's saying that it is down here and to the right. This hashtag. You are German the game. I'm sorry. I'm just piercing right now. This is just too funny. I'm fun. Okay, all free trophy, setting champion, here we go. Aww. Uh, Red, I took the wrong way. So it looks like I have no choice but to go for the infinity hole. Stanley, Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games is immediately... One of my one of more my ingenious more concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, now then since you've gotten, gotten to see the infinite hole, you, you can press, press the press teleport the button, button to pop, pop back, back up to the top, top and we and can we continue, continue onward. Great. Great. Now, now, I'm very, I'm very excited, excited to show you, to show you even more of my more ideas for the sequel. sequel. How far can I go? Okay. And I I don't yes. know what else there is to say, Stanley. It's an infinite hole. It's exactly what you're doing right now, but forever. There really are so many other fascinating exhibits that I've prepared for you. I really spent quite a lot of time on all this, and I would very much like to show you some more of them. Whoa. How about we go ahead and press that teleport button again so we can get back to what's really important about... Oh, goodness. Well, this is rather embarrassing, Stanley. I'll be honest with you, I truly did not believe that anyone would actually stay in the hole long enough to hit the bottom. Yes, I know, I told you the hole was infinite, but come on! Who actually wants to fall forever? The hole was plenty deep, it was more than deep enough in my opinion. Maybe it's you who likes falling too much, maybe you're the problem! 
Look, look, uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly in fact? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Yeah, almost infinity hole is not infinity. You would have known. It just works. Are they doing the flex tip thing? I feel like there's got to be some way you can get this achievement this way. So. difficult indeed. Maybe even... Jeff. This is nice. Of course, I've been that's why. Is this all? Or is Yeah. Oh, yeah, the bucket. I forgot to look at it. The bucket. This is a bucket. Dear God, there's more. No. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. Oh my god. <laughs> Can you feel it? Yes. A glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. But what do I do now? Does anyone, Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Yeah, it should. Hmm. Is there any place that has water? I feel like I can soak the machine and... This is just too funny.
some way, some way that Infinity Hall and then L. Oh, I think I just go to the exit? No. That's all I think because I think I've explored pretty much everything. Okay, which way was the exit again? <laughs> No, wait, that's blood. Okay, I feel like I'm just walking around in circles. Exit, exit, exit. Where's the exit? E for exit. I was... Uh, my hair started. So. Will there be vehicles? Will there be drivers? All right, right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready yeah. to move on now? What do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Oh my god. Um, well, I, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they wouldn't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait. Maybe, Maybe that's, that's it. it. I can, I take, can the take the original, the original Stanley, Stanley Parable and simply, simply well, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. With respect. With, respect. with care yeah, for the vision and, and integrity of the original game. <laughs> would it possibly work? I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead. Take a look. Oh my god! Ah! Oh my god! <laughs> this is awesome. Oh my god, this is so awesome and weird. Oh, this, this looks like a horror game and control. It's a few like...
This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. Hey, Stanley. So he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clear. Hello everyone, welcome to the Stanley Parable Shot, 2. Frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh wow. Give me a few seconds guys, okay? I'll be right back. I love All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh my god, the bucket's here. Bucket. Stanley picked up the bucket. Hmm, that's weird. I'm gonna go around turning off all the Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Could his co-workers really all be gone? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. I'm sorry, if this restarts, if this like restarts as the sequel, we only so happy. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy. It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's a place to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Oh, what the wall! One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Okay. I've got a feeling, money for stealing, but you are, of course, say that... Oh. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. 
Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was We need one more subscriber and then we can reach 169. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? How funny would it be if the bucket was actually the villain? Logical explanation. Bucket, how could you? Oh, such hard for words. Loading, 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 loading. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. Tiny... The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Tiny bucket gem? Everything will be fine. Oh my god, tiny bucket gem. <laughs> Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. What's this one? Nah, I'll do that ending later. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. What do you think, uh, Bucket Gem? Tiny Bucket Gem? Oh, I don't know, man. It's kind of uh, scary. Mm -hmm. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like Okay, at least one floor has that red. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? Oh, no. What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? Doesn't want to mop. These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't <laughs> accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support.
what, what, wait, 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 what was happening? What's happening? Why, had Why had the door stopped? stopped? Was Stanley, was Stanley and the bucket, bucket not about, about to be freed? freed? An unbearable silence, silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty, until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket. Those who need lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms, not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room, but at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. I want to see what happens if I go in the opposite direction now. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. No, no, stop. stop. Look, Look there, there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. This is, this is a bucket, dear now then, God. I'm going to run you through some test scenarios, and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This, this should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. I told you, is this a bucket? Incorrect. It huh? is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. Is this a bucket? Item, Item two. two. Is, is this, this a bucket? bucket. Incorrect. Incorrect. It is a, it is 3D, a 3D printed, printed recreation, recreation of a bucket, bucket not an not actual, actual bucket. bucket. No, this is an actual bucket. Let me guess. Item three. Is this a bucket? Can I call helpline? Can I do anything? I'm gonna say no. Incorrect. This is a bucket. Damn it, I did!
Item four. Is this a bucket? No, it's a tractor. Correct. This is a tractor and not a bucket. To be honest, I just sort of put this one in here as a gimme, but I was starting to get concerned that even this might be too much for you. Thank you for not making me look like an idiot. Okay, next one. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> next one's gonna be a bucket. Is this a bucket? Incorrect. This is a bucket. Item six. Is this a bucket? Trick question. Both. Gotcha. <laughs> item. Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Hmm. Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you. you. There's nothing here. Of course it isn't a bucket. We both know full well that nothing isn't a bucket. Wait, when I say nothing isn't a bucket, that makes it sound like I'm saying everything is a bucket, which of course is not true. Unless, is that what you think? Answer me straight, Stanley. Are you trying to tell me that you believe everything is a bucket? You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now, I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the No! Moment. No bucket, Jim! No! No bucket, Jim! I'm sorry! What happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait, was everything a bucket? Every single thing in the game was a bucket. What? Oh my god, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley. You're still, You're still here. here. You're, You're not a not bucket, bucket either. either. Oh, this is wonderful news. We're not We're buckets. buckets. Yes, yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue, but it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what, I'll reset everything and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. What the fuck? Hold on, hold on. I, I, my head's hurting. How many endings does this have? The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, no, said, the, said bucket. the bucket. Don't go to Don't the go meeting to the room. room. Go somewhere, go somewhere else. else. The cargo, cargo lift. lift. Good, Good, said the bucket. The bucket. Now ride, ride the lift the all the way to the way top. To There's, something There's something up there, up there I, I need you to do. do. Stanley, Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. The bucket is love, the bucket is life. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. 
Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley! Can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. You see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from, me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket, this stupid hunk of metal. Not anyone. It's sad. He doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Go home to work, go home to work, go No, I'm, I'm having feelings for the bucket. No, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes, the bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give no. it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. No. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. No matter how hard St Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. I want to press it. Uh -huh. oh. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chin. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge. I want to see what happens if I pull out the plug with it. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. 
Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Give me the bucket, Stanley. <laughs> no, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yeah, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Bucket wants everything. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick now up pick the up phone, the phone said the bit. Whoa, oh, 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 hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Can't you see? Oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Hmm, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it, but there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. My art, please. Please. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. <laughs> That's definitely something I'm saying. Dunny good, with the good. funny. <laughs> this saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times, just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. When did the comedy skit turn into... Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back.
This is too funny. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we have the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll, oh, figure, I'll it figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Oh, the two guys, two guys. Damn it! What's this thing? Oh, jeez, Rick! Oh, golly! It's a Stanley Parable, Morty. Stanley Parable. Here we go. You ready? <coughs> When right. Stanley, and Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open two doors, doors, they, they entered, entered the door on the left. What? Uh, we're, back we're back at the phone, phone already. already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling well... I think... I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. No. Yes, surely that will help me improve my life. Here we go. You ready? <coughs> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. We're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Okay, yeah, it's gonna keep. Here we go. You ready? <coughs> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely done and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed in every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Stanley, you—it's <laughs> as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No, still not. It, it, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame. Pale. Still sequel? Yep. Stanley, this bucket is so metal. I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just like, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see.
Is this sand or? co-workers were gone what, what could it mean <gasps> the bucket and they decided to go to the meeting room perhaps stanley picked up the bucket and smiled he'd never be alone again not truly alone not with the bucket around stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left All figures are like that speaking. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Ha ha ha! Another miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley yeah. figs? Oh, no, mini. What about Stanlerines? Yes, I think I like that. Another no, like Stanlerine under your belt. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. And that's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious. He exclaimed, without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley, find me. He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, 
Her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mary Arthur. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. St the good old bucket. Just stand in the bucket. Off oh, on another this thing. adventure together. I'll do the bad. I'll do the... the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Because the boss knows the butt. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. Cells. Back about. Sorry, back. Just had a look at the troll face. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Four nine two four nine two is the um. Wait, then who's all one? 
Oh, one might do them. But it's Was the bucket under the mine control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation, controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this... But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take, to take over the machine, the machine and claim oh the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly. Silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all wrong? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the Bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, living through live streams of the silliest birds. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. I want to see if I can get it. Just right now. Wait. Hello. This is a recorded message scheduled either by you or a person in your place of work. The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately and cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. Where are we going today, the bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Two seconds, guys. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Sorry about that. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place. What the? Well, her about you. We, you see, we your friends about you, and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's the this bucket you're carrying. The bucket. the bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the adventure line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Wee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. But now, this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. No. I don't want to give up the bucket. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need, we need to get, to get rid, rid of the bucket. bucket. No. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. No. This is the Bucket Destroyer. Oh, God. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? No! Not Can you guess what box. the Bucket Destroyer does? Yes. Sure, you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go I'm ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye, Say goodbye to the Bucket, bucket. and then no, pump I'm it into the machine when you're ready. No, I'm not destroying Tiny Bucket Gem. I'm not destroying Tiny Bucket Gem. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the Bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your Bucket. Destroying Buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Oh. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you oh, even God. say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... Beautiful. The Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you, all of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. Good bucket. 
A strong bucket. A humble bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Well, we know what they took the door on his left to go back, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm, I'm the, the one who one gave you the bucket, bucket but you're but spending, spending too much, too much time, with time with it. Don't you, Don't want, you want another story, story involving the adventure line? line? We could Edmund. make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's... Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really Why like ten bucket? personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and go. Hell, I guess it's going to be time for us to play this. Now we're just going to a soft wind, wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, oh, no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office.
Stabbing it. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, money plus. Give me a skip ending for skipping. I'm taking the bucket with me. Huh? Oh my god, actually tells you a large room, lots of boxes. Somewhere above red and blue, near a fireplace. Tell me where they are. Clever. Very clever. Uh, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Um, can you be... Let's, um, take on the bucket. Oh no, it's gonna be a long time. 755 floors, you would be exhausted. Oh yeah, 56. Wait, are we going up or down? We're going up. Okay, pod. And bucket lines just flats. I will sacrifice myself to the skip. I didn't do that. No. I love you, bucket. <laughs> oh my god, that's so fun. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Bucket? No! Oh, I just got rid of the bucket. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. It was okay. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stan. What? Really? 
I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on board. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. And now I'm torn between Stanlarines and Figlids. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Fine, I walked through the red. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would, we would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And I think, well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Hmm, what do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Here, yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> no, wait, where are you going? Oh, no, stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Please, Stanley. No! Oh, thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? There, see? This is what you want. This is where we can both be happy. We really can. If we stop moving, we just have to stop moving. Stanley, go back. There's nothing good that can come from this. Just not, not believe me? me? What, can, what I can I say to convince, to convince you? you? There you go, me back my bucket. Tiny bucket gem. Give me a little bucket gem, and I won't jump. Stanley, Stanley. let's go let's back go to back the to other, other room. room. Can you do, can that, do that for that me? For me? Perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? No. Perhaps not. My god, is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? 
Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wondered, do you actually want to stay alive? Or are you just teasing me? Is it over? It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. Bucket! Should I? Or should I? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. There's only one place in the world fireplaces, and that is the, the boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley to take. Too much for any man to take. He fell to his knees, bursting into half moans, half sobs, the guttural retching of life. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to end it here, guys, so if you like this video, leave a like and comment. I need to do one more thing. Quit. Right. Well, I'll see you uh, tomorrow, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Bye, everyone. Make sure to like and subscribe.